Hi, and welcome to An American Backslider in Las Vegas. My name is Dwayne Walker, and I do live in Las Vegas. My ultimate goal is to live in the Philippines. So when that day comes and I'm in the Philippines, then this series is going to be called An American Backslider in the Philippines. And if I happen to be any, anywhere else, that's what it's going to be. An American Backslider in anywhere else, USA. But right now, I'm zeroing in on the presence, and I am in Las Vegas. And when it comes to backsliding, Las Vegas is the place to be. Las Vegas is the capital of backsliders. Whether you're a church pastor who wants to get out of town to experience uh, high-class, topless entertainment, or maybe even visit the chicken ranch in Power Rump, an environmentalist who wants to drive a high-class gas guzzler zooming through the desert, a conservative who wants to spend the weekend living like he thinks a godless liberal lives, then Las Vegas truly has something for everybody. And I'll be showing you some of the great events you can do to please your inner backslider before going home to your boring conservative town. Now, it's easy to look at Las Vegas as some kind of a godless paradise, but that's not really true. After living here for over 10 years, I can truly tell you that it's a very superstitious town. We have churches on almost every street corner, even on the Las Vegas Strip. And the churches on the Strip have some very interesting stories to tell. On some occasions, visitors who attend these churches may actually drop casino chips in the offering plates as the offering plates go by. And one Catholic church was known for having a specific person who takes the chips to the casinos to trade them in for money. You know what they're called? Chipmunks. And most people, when they think of backsliding, they think of religious backsliding. Uh, but I don't see that my progression, whether it be religious or political, as necessarily backsliding. I see it as being uh, very progressive, as taking a progressive step forward. Uh, the backsliding that's in the title in this series comes from the fact that the Idea Think Tank has called the United States a backslidden democracy. Uh, and, and that comes from the fact that at one time we believed that people should live their lives without government interference, uh, but now some people want to stop people from living their best lives. Um, whether they be gay or lesbian, atheist or Buddhist, or maybe even followers of Islam, they want certain demographics deported. At one time, they pointed to the Statue of Liberty and took pride in the words, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to be free, the wretched refuse of your steaming shores. Send these, your homeless tempest toss to me. I lift my lamp beside the doors. Well, today a significant portion of America seem to want to send the Statue of Liberty packing back to France because they want to start uh, deporting people whom they deem as not being very productive. So I guess that means that Americans must believe that man now belongs to the state and unless uh, uh, the men or women are not productive and, and giving out their established labor for society that they need to be deported, that they're out of here. Um, is, is that where we're at now? Well, go figure. And you know what? Um, it's not all uh, Christians or fundamentalists or evangelicals. There were actually some atheists who voted for Trump and then eventually whined about prayer being brought into the public schools. Uh, Mike uh, Figueredo of the Humanist Report recently did an episode chronicling how D David Silverman, uh, formerly of American Atheist, before he got kicked out of that organization, voted for Donald Trump and then blamed the Democrats for his vote. That's taking real responsibility. Well, I would think that uh, any atheist or free thinker who spent their time talking about the separation of church and state and then suddenly decided to cast a vote for what I sometimes call the religious Reich, I think that's a form of backsliding as well. But even, even myself, I'm not going to hold myself as being very innocent here uh, because I in myself have been going through some changes that some might consider backsliding. Um, I once considered myself a free speech absolutist and thought that the ACLU defending the rights of the Nazis to march in Skokie, Illinois was a good thing because if they can have free speech, so can I. And the First Amendment protects offensive speech. And so, yeah, I was all, all for that because if the most offensive among us have the right to speak, then I would have the right to speak. Um, well, I seem, after Charlottesville, I seem to be having my own little doubts about that. Um, 
I find myself reflecting on what's called the paradox of tolerance, which looks at tolerance as a social contract. To put it bluntly, if you have five tolerant men or women and one is intolerant, the intolerant will eventually destroy the four tolerant, and then you'll have an intolerant society. As the philosopher Giatino Mosca once said, if tolerance is taken to the point where it tolerates the destructions of those same principles that made tolerance possible in the first place, it becomes intolerable. So, maybe I am backsliding from being a free speech absolutist if it means tolerating the speech of those who would ultimately destroy me. So thanks for watching An American Backslider in Vegas. If you liked what you saw and want to see more, uh, click the like button and subscribe. And if you have any comments or suggestions or just want to vent, then visit the comment section and vent away. My name is Dwayne Walker, and I'll see you next time on An American Backslider in Las Vegas. Five, four, three, two, one. We have liftoff. Lapu-1 has been launched. The Philippines' first astronaut takes to space. My brother will be the first Filipino in space. He's taking the Filipino flag, a photo of his family, and a rosary. His name is Lapu, like the fierce warrior who fought Magellan. He'll be the first Filipino astronaut in space. What I do is for God, my family, and the Philippines. Adoshini is Lapu's sister. Given up for adoption, she grew up in America, an outspoken advocate for science. Why take a rosary into space? It's a symbol of our Spanish conquerors. We could make a bold step toward the future, but you're honoring those who persecuted science. That's your Western side talking. You've become an American backslider. My adoptive parents put me in a troubled teen center because I wouldn't follow along. I asked too many questions. Maybe you were just too independent for them. Maybe. I came back to reconnect with my roots, not to embrace the religion of our colonizers. Lapu and Adoshini's siblings, divided by beliefs, united by a shared vision for a more inclusive future. A humanist sister and a Christian brother, wrestling with the legacy of Filipino identity and colonization. Lapu won an American backslider in the Philippines. From the director who brought you Bible madness and wrestling then and now, a powerful journey of faith, heritage and the struggle for identity. Lapu won an American backslider in the Philippines. Support our GoFundMe to help make this movie a reality.